Welcome and uh, happy to see you all. Um, back problem is a problem all over the world. And in the US, according to WebMD and other sources, about 80% of the population at some time will have a back pain, back issue. And uh, if all these people, up to 10%, can develop chronic back pain. And the back pain is very common to have in lower back. And an interesting fact is that we don't know, always know why we get the back pain. Of course, it could be things like occupational things, doing repetitive things. Uh, it could be diet, obesity, posture. But another interesting fact, it could even be due to, for example, depression. As you know, the emotional body and the physical body are connected. So um, emotional problem can show up as a physical problem. So things to do to um, keep a healthy ba back is healthy diet. Make sure you stretch before you do a workout and warm up. And also doing physical activity like yoga will help you stay healthy. Just some other things you can do. Let's get started, have fun and uh, do some yoga. Starting standing up today. So you can have your feet about hip width apart, moving forward, back, heels, toes. Just see how that feels. And you can start with your right foot, put your heel on the ground and then spread your toes and slowly Place the whole foot on the floor, toes are spread. Same thing with your left foot, starting with the heel, spreading your toes. See if you can find your center here. So you're not standing in the heels or more towards the toes. And just relax, shoulders up and down. If it's comfortable, close your eyes. Grounding into the floor. Breathing in and out through your nose. How does your body feel today? Any pain, ache? Do you feel energized? Just notice. And start from the soles of your feet, moving the breath up all the way through your legs, through your spine, your neck, and up to the crown of your head. And on the exhale, do the reverse, starting from the crown of the head, moving all the way down to the ground. And staying here just for a few breaths. Last inhale and exhale here. If you want to set an intention for your practice, please do so now. And if your eyes are closed, slowly open them. Doing a walking meditation. Very short ones that we just have an hour, but at least you get a feel of it and then you can explore and do it on your own later. So we're walking around. I'm just going to stay kind of in one spot so you can see me. So you want to be very mindful of each step, starting with your right or left foot, heel on the floor, moving forward and just feel each step. How does it feel? Are you balanced in the middle? Are you using more the outer edge of the foot or the, maybe the inner part of your foot? How does the ball of the foot feel? And just move. So we walk all day and we don't really pay attention to how we walk or how it feels. It's just so natural. It's nice sometimes to just 
take a pause and actually really pay attention. How does, oh, how do your legs feel, the knees, everything? And if you have a hard time sitting down in stillness and meditation, this could be an option too. And doing this outside is really nice. Once you start to pay attention to your body, you can start listening to the sounds around you. Just gonna be quiet for a short time here. And then walk to the top of your mat. And close your eyes again. Connect with your body and your mind. So as I said, if you have time, explore this more on your own later. And outside is great. Slowly open your eyes. Feet hip width apart. Bend your knees. And come down. Let your head relax. Jaw relax. Grab a hold of opposite elbows, lean forward, just breathe in and out through your nose. Feel your lips. And let go of your elbows, hands over your knees here or above the knees. Cat cow. Inhale, round and exhale. Look forward. Just move back and forth here. You can add a new jai breath if you want. Just stretching the back of the throat, sound like the ocean, calming yourself. Just warming up your spine. One more inhale and exhale. And come all the way down, left hand on the floor, straighten your right leg and twist to the right side, right arm up, you can look up or down, depends on your neck, how it feels. And come down, switch your legs, right knee bent and twist. Open up to the left side. And come down and slowly roll up. Vertebrae by vertebrae. Inhale, palms together. And hands in front of your heart center. Inhale up again. And slowly come all the way down. Straight back. You can have your knees straight or bent. Coming to all fours. You can send your left knee, bend your right knee, right toes point up, and then small movement, press up towards the ceiling here. Your, your hips are squared to the floor, use your core too. Inhale and exhale, round your back, knee comes forward. And extend out. And forward, moving your spine. Last one, extend your right leg and left arm forward. Breathe here. Left hand to the floor, cross your right leg or right knee behind the left and sit down, working your hips. Don't worry if you don't come all the way down. You should, as long as you feel this in your hips. And slowly come up. Switch legs. Bending your left knee this time. Press your left foot towards the ceiling. Good job. And 
hand around your back, come forward with your left knee, back and forward. Extend the left leg, right hand forward. Breathe. Right hand on the floor and left knee behind the right. Sit down. And come up. Tuck your toes, plank. Use your core, strong arms, strong core. Breathe. Bend your elbows, come all the way down. Hands under your shoulders. Elbows back, moving in Cobra. So forehead to the floor. Inhale, come up. Exhale, down. Again, up, down. And stay in Cobra. So create space between your shoulders and your ears. Don't worry if you're not that high up, it doesn't matter. Coming back down, interlace your hands behind your backs, straighten your arms. Inhale, superwoman, superman, come up. Legs off the floor, strengthening your back. Come down, hands under your shoulders again, tuck your toes, plank, down dog. And you can walk one heel at a time into the floor, bending the other knee. And then come to stillness. Behind you, three-legged dog. And then open the right hip to the ceiling. So you're bending your right knee. Stretch and open. And then come back, three-legged dog. Bend your right knee and come forward with your right knee to the floor. Coming in variation of pigeon pose. So we're staying high up here. Hips are square to the front. You can place your hands, fingers on the floor. If you have blocks or books, you can even put your hands on those. Another option is palms together in front of your heart center. So using your core and your muscles and draw everything to the midline here. Working the hip area. So either here or here. And come down, tuck your left toes. Three legs dog again, right knee behind you. And then step your right foot in between your hands. Left knee on the floor. Coming to low lunge. Arms up, shoulders down. Press your hips forward. And mindful of the 90 degree with the front knee. Stay here and breathe. Palms together in front of your heart center. And then twist to the right side. So the left upper arm is on the outside of your right leg here or thigh. Breathe here. Stay here or tuck your back toes and back leg off the floor. Two options. Either you stay where you are and then you take a big step forward with your left foot, continue and twist. If that's not accessible to you, you can place your hands on the floor then take your left foot forward and continue to twist. One more inhale and exhale here. Sit down in your chair and then come to normal chair. So wait to watch your heels. Breathe, sit lower maybe. Fold in half, relax your head. Inhale halfway up, hands on your shins or fingertips on the floor. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach arms overhead, palms in front of your heart center. 
Let's move on. Same thing, other side. Inhale up. And fold in half. Halfway up, Ardha Sanasana. Exhale, fold. Walk to plank. Take a few breaths here. Extend your elbows back. Come all the way down. Mini cobra. Inhale, come up. Exhale, forehead to floor. Again. And let's do two more. And last time, stay up in Cobra. Broad collarbones. Breathe here. Come all the way down. Tuck your toes, knees up the floor, plank, down dog. Breathe. Enjoy this pose. Inhale, extend the left leg behind you. Lift the three-legged dog. Bend your left knee and open your left hip to the ceiling. At the same time, you're squaring your shoulders towards the floor. And three-legged dog again. And come forward with your left knee. The pigeon variation, use the blocks if you need to. Fingertips on the floor or palms together. Draw everything to the midline. Hands to the floor. Tuck your right toes, left leg up. And then left foot in between your hands, right knee on the floor. Low lunge, hips forward. Breathe. Hands together, it's going to be heart center. Twist to the left side. So your left elbow points to the ceiling, you're pressing your palms together. Tuck your right toes, right leg off the floor maybe. So a high lunge variation. Step your right foot forward, continue to twist in the chair. Come to regular chair. And fold in half. Inhale, halfway up, look forward, exhale, fold. Inhale, reach out and up. And palms in front of your heart center. Good job. Let's move and take your right foot back. Coming in to warrior two. So front heel aligned with back arch, 90 degree with the front knee, shoulders over your hips. Strong arms. Look over your left hand here. How does your body feel in this pose? Where are your thoughts? Just observe. Straighten your left leg. Trikonasana next. So imagine someone is pulling you forward. At the same time, your hips come back. And let your left hand land where it feels good. You can even use the block here if you want on the high or lower level. And place your left hand on that. Again, depending on how your neck is looking up or down here. Trying to stack your shoulders in this pose. That's the most important thing or more important than trying to get your left hand or further down. That can come second. And slowly come up, reverse warrior. 
I mean, reverse triangle. We usually do warrior, but reverse triangle. So both legs are straight. Press your feet into the floor, opening the left side rib cage wave. Come forward, turn to the front of the mat. So coming up to high lunge here. Back leg is straight. From here, Shiva squat. Inhale and exhale, bend both knees, right knee behind the left. Come back again. High lunge. Two options for the next pose. Take your hands and hold your front ankle here. You will feel all the muscle moving that we usually don't feel when we're walking and balancing. Stay there, or you can just place your hands on the floor, fingertips, that's an easier pose. See if you can come up, taking your right leg off the floor, you can point your toes on the right foot, breathe. And come all the way up. Grab a hold of your right knee, standing tall. From here, take your right arm back. And then you're going to look back. Or if it's too much, look forward. Otherwise, look back. If this is really easy for you, you can grab a hold of the outside of your right foot and then look back. Two more breaths wherever you are. And come forward, both feet on the floor. Inhale and exhale. Good job. Let's do this on the other side. So big step back with the left leg. Warrior two. Grounding through your feet. Straighten your right leg. Inhale and exhale. Your variation of Trikonasana triangle pose, looking up or down. Mindful of pressing all four corners of your feet into the floor here. We're working the spine in many different directions, twisting, side bend, up and down, come all the way up. Reverse triangle, so both legs are straight. And come up front of the mat again. Your hips are square to the front. High lunge. Inhale and exhale, Shiva squat. Bending both knees, left foot off the floor, and come back again. High lunge. Exhale, either hands to the floor or hold your ankle here. So really use your core. As I said, every time you do a um, balancing pose, it really helps if you use your core and see if you are ready for lift up. Oops. One side is usually easier than the other. And come all the way up. Grab a hold of your left knee, balance. Left arm back, and if you can, look back. Doesn't matter if you fall out of the pose. Just do what works for you, checking with your breath. So stay here, or straighten your left leg, holding the foot from the outside. And come down, good job. Inhale, exhale. One more time. And exhale. 
close your eyes, maybe hands on your heart. Just a short pause so you can go inwards. Maybe remind yourself of the goal you set, if you did set one in the beginning of the class. And open your eyes. Some more balancing poses, starting with tree pose. So spread your toes on your left foot, bending your right knee, engage your core, open the hips here. So you want the right knee to the side. I mean, it may just, depends on how open you are, but uh, see where your edge is. Then place your right foot, maybe your toes are still on the floor, below the knee, above the knee, or all the way up. Palms together in front of your heart center. Find your drishti, look at something in front of you that doesn't move, and check in with your breath. Maybe arms up, maybe you're looking up, maybe you're even closing your eyes. Just play with this, you're supposed to have fun, so don't take it so serious if you fall out. And hands down. We're gonna transition directly into dancer's pose. If it's too much, just place both feet on the floor. So take your right elbow towards your waist and grab a hold of the inside of the foot. I have to move so you can see me here. Hips are square to the front. If this is enough, stay here. Otherwise, left arm up, press your right foot back and come forward here so it doesn't matter how far down you get strong standing leg breathe two more breaths and then slowly come up and out shake it out good job same thing other side bend your left knee and place the foot where it's comfortable Maybe you have one of those days where balancing is really difficult. Or maybe it's easier for you. Or maybe this is your easy side. And then do whatever you did on the other side. Connect with your breath. Palms together. Left knee forward, left elbow into the waist. Grab a hold of the foot from the inside. Square your hips to the front. Maybe right arm up. So even if you just stay here and press your foot back, that still works. And then come into the full pose if you want to go further. And slowly come out of the pose, shake it out. Inhale, exhale through your nose. One more time. Let all tension go from your body. One more standing pose. <clears throat> Revolved triangle pose. Uh, so stand in the middle of the mat. You can take your right foot forward. I would say about three, four feet apart. So feet are hip width apart, arms up, and then scissor the arms out to the right side. From here, we're going to come down. If you have a block, you can use that. It's a little bit easier and place it on the outside of your right foot and place the hand on there. The other hand is on your sacrum. So you're trying to have one shoulder on top of the other. It's not an easy pose. If that doesn't work, you hand on the inside of the foot, on the front foot. From here, maybe right arm up. At the same time, you are squaring your hips. So your right hip, and so let's see, your right hip comes back, left hip forward. 
read here. And come down, hands on your hips, press up, G together. Shake them out. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Left foot forward. Feet width apart, arms up. Scissor them out, left side. Coming down. And hand on the outside of the front foot or inside. The other hand on your sacrum. Find your balance there. And again, your right hip forward left hip back maybe left arm up maybe look up it's not an easy pose so don't be discouraged make sure your breath is smooth steady the whole time let's do one more breath here awesome hands on your hips come up one more inhale exhale good job Feet hip width or wider, toes point out. Come down to Malasana, squatting. So long, nice spine. If your heels are not on the floor, you can use your mat. Roll it, roll it, roll it, and then put your heels on top. So the more you roll it, the higher you can come up and the easier it is. If that's not an option, you can sit on a block or a book or something. Just come to stillness. Relax all your muscles. Close your eyes. Pressing your knees in, elbows up, opening your heart, your collarbones here. And I know many of you are working towards coming up in a crow pose. So if your eyes are closed, just visualize yourself coming into crow. That's the next pose. Being strong, balance yourself. If you don't know what crow pose is, don't worry. I will show it. Visualizations are very powerful, so take advantage, use them. Okay, showing your crow pose. So you can see from the side. Hands to the floor, you can have them about hip width apart, spreading your fingers. And I think it's easier to have your feet together, otherwise you can do it from that wider. And then stand up on your toes, getting your knees all the way up into your armpits. Same time, engage your core. You see, you have, may have to play with where you place your hands here. Looking forward, so not down, look forward. Engage your core the whole time. And then balance, so you're coming forward. One heel off the floor maybe. Stay there, maybe both feet. I know it could be scary because you are balancing. And a lot of people are afraid of uh, losing <clears throat> their balance and fold forward. So another thing is if you, you can have a block here maybe. If we were a regular class, I could go around and help you, but just we'll take some time here today because I know a lot of you have done progress. So you can even have your head maybe, so it's easier there. So stay there. If you had enough, you can come to child pose. If you want to try and jump back to chaturanga, you can do that. Up dog. Down dog, and then we all meet in child pose. Just for a few breaths here. Where are your thoughts here? If this was a difficult pose, just be kind to yourself. You're learning patience throughout the practice that you can use even off the mat. And all of us come down on your belly. Sphinx pose. Tops of the feet to the floor. Feet are about hip width apart. Forearms on the floor, about shoulder width apart. Spread your fingers. Press your elbows back. 
So you're really opening up your chest here, your collarbone. Breathe. Working the spine again. From here, bow pose. So you can try it. If you can't do it, you can always do a locus variation. Maybe arms back like we did in the beginning here and tucking your chin a little bit. If you want to try bow pose, forehead to the floor, bend your knees, grab a hold of your ankle, turn the outside, flex your feet. Inhale and come up here, pressing your shins back. Breathing the whole time. Two more breaths. And thumb down. Good job. Take your right hand over to the left. So your upper right arm is on the floor, palms together. I'll move so you can see me better. <clears throat> so pressing your palms together, right elbow towards the ceiling. At the same time, your hip bones are towards the floor. So we're not opening up here yet. Nice spinal twist. From here, bend your left knee. The knee is kind of aligned with the hip here. And come over on your back. Core work. Eagle arms and eagle legs. Right arm under your left, palms together. And then right leg cross over the left. You may even be able to hook your, your uh, right foot behind the left ankle here. Shoulders off the floor. So the only thing you're going to do is crunch, crunches. So separate your elbows and your knees and then together. So just work it here. Shoulders off the floor the whole time. Making your obliques. Let's do eight, seven, six, five, four more. And come all the way down. Heels into your buttocks, hip width apart, palms to the floor, long arms, bridge pose. Inhale, exhale, and inhale, hips to the ceiling. Walking your shoulder blades together, and you can stay here or See if you can interlace your fingers and then walking your shoulder blades together. So again, feet are parallel. So knees are parallel too. It's very easy to display your knees out in this pose. Once you're in the pose, create some space in between your chin and your chest. And stay still and breathe. Pressing your feet into the floor. And let go of your fingers, if you have them together. Come all the way down. A few breaths here before we continue. You can even take your knees up uh, and hold them and feet off the floor. Just as a counter. The reclined pigeon. Take your right ankle above your left knee. Flex your right ankle. Left foot off the floor, so both feet are flexed. Right arm in between your legs and left arm on the outside. And then press your left knee in towards the chest. So you should have a good stretch on the right hip here. Just breathe here. 
and relax your muscles if you feel any tight spots just send some extra love to that spot and just maybe use the mantra relax relax and your muscles will relax more or maybe you're taking the pose too far back off a little bit your body usually invites you after a while and then you can go deeper don't force it and come down with your feet to the floor again doing the same thing we did on the other side but we're doing the opposite order so we're doing a loop here today left foot off the floor right foot off the floor so both feet are flexed press your right knee to the chest usually store a lot of tension in your hips so it's always work good to work in your hips too two more breaths here and slowly come all the way down Bridge pose again as we did, or option if you want to go to a full wheel pose. So the bridge pose was this one. Maybe your fingers together, shoulder blades walk together. If you want to try a, a full wheel, place your palms aligned with your ears. So elbows point up or a little bit out. Hips off the floor, and then place your the crown of your head to the floor and press up here. So you're trying to straighten your arms, your legs as much as possible. Again, feet are still parallel. Breathe wherever you are. And then slowly tuck your chin in if you're all the way up and come down. After that, it feels good to hug yourself to neutralize your spine and let gravity do its work. Moving on to the core work, eagle arms, eagle legs. So this time left arm um, lower and then left leg across. Palms together, shoulders off the floor, and let's st start. Crunches, crunches. Of course, if you want to go slower or faster, you can do that too. Working your obliques again. Let's do four more, three, two, and one. Ah, that feels good. Turning to your left. So your left knee is out. I'll move to the other side. You can see me better. Palms together. And then extend both legs behind you. Continue to twist here. So both hips press down to the floor. And come all the way over on your belly. Into bow pose. 
again, if bow post is not accessible, do a variation of locus this time, maybe um, fingers together and up, or maybe arms in front of you and come up. For the rest of us, forehead to the floor, bend your knees, grab your ankles from the outside, flex your feet, come all the way up, breathe here, smile, Always helps if it's a difficult pose. Two more breaths. And come down. You can move your hips a little. And finally, swing spokes. Spreading your fingers again, elbows under your shoulders, press your elbows back, broaden your collarbones, open your heart, even close your eyes here. And come all the way down, palms on top of each other, forehead on top. You can be in stillness or move your hips from side to side, maybe feet off the floor, just releasing any tension you may have in the body here. And press yourself up, extended puppy. So hips over your knees, walk your hands forward and chest to the floor. Forehead may touch the floor. Nice stretch, elongating your spine. And walk your hands back. Come all the way up. Camel pose next, knees on the floor, hip width apart, hands on your sacrum, pressing your hips forward. You can look forward or let your head hang. Stay here if this is enough today. <clears throat> Otherwise, option two is tucking your toes and then grab a hold of your heels. And again, send your hips forward. So you want your hips over your knees here. If this is still really easy for you, tops of the feet to the floor and then take your knees, I mean, take your heels and maybe let your head hang back. Just breathe here. Open your heart. Two more breaths. If you're all the way back, hands on your sacrum and come all the way up. So let's counter this in rabbit pose, sitting, knees together, sitting on your heels. Place your hands on your heels. If you're really sweaty, use a blanket or something or a towel so you don't slip. Then tuck your chin, come forward, head to the floor. And And come all the way up again. Awesome job. Lay down on your back, legs up and flex your feet. If it's not comfortable, of course, you can just point your toes. If you wanna to come to shoulder stands, you can do that. I'm not showing it today. So if you know what you're doing, if you prefer that, I'm just doing this a little easier variation of it today. Just 
a few more breaths here. And then bend your knees in, extend your right leg, extend your left knee over to the right side. And then look over to the left side, extending the left arm. Supine twist, one of my favorites. So you're working on having both shoulders on the floor, shoulder blades, at the same time working on that bent knee towards the floor. Come to the middle, switch the legs. Extend the right arm out, sending the bent knee over to the left side, and looking over to the right. Just relax all the muscles here. Come to the middle, reach up the floor, hug yourself, or move whatever you need to do to release tension. And then hands behind your knees, roll up and down on your spine a few times. Nice massage for your spine. And come all the way up to seated. Before we come to final relaxation, we are doing a pranayama breathing exercise. So today we are doing alternative nostril breathing. Take your right hand, right thumb on the right nostril, inhaling through the next uh, left nostril. We're probably going to start with inhale to four. Take your index and middle finger over your left nostril, hold it, and then exhale to the right side. So inhale one side, hold it, exhale the other side. And then you inhale on that side again. You're going back and forth. So close your eyes if it's comfortable. Let's get started. Inhale, left nostril. Hold it. Exhale, right. Inhale, right. Hold it. Exhale, left. Inhale for four breaths. Hold it. Exhale, right nostril for eight. Inhale for four. Hold it. Exhale for eight, left nostril. Inhale four. Hold it. Exhale right. Inhale four. Hold it, Ex exhale left, eight breath. Just go on your own pace and continue on your own. And of course, if four and eight doesn't work, you know, listen to your inner voice and your body and count on something else. Just one more time on each side. And when you're done, palms together and just rub them together, creating some heat here. Cup your hands over your eyes. Just 
Feel the energy flowing. And then hands on your knees or in your lap. Option, if you want to sit, sit here in a cross leg position, continue your meditation, maybe use the mantra. If you have a mantra, you can use that, or you can do the mantra OM, OM all over, or peace, or relax, whatever feels good for you. Or if you prefer to come to Savasana, corpse pose, you can do that. Staying here for a few breaths. Palms facing up, relax, repeat, let your toes hang out. Just stay there. Writing and still your body and mind. Relaxing your muscles. Slowly start deepening, lengthening your breath. Bring your awareness back to your physical body. Start moving your toes, your fingers. Maybe reach your arms over your head. Pointing your toes, stretching. Come over to the right side. Rest on your right arm. And when you're ready, come up to seated cross leg position if you're not already there. And take a moment here, scan your body. Send yourself some love. And if you set an intention at the beginning of the practice, maybe remind yourself of that now. What is your outlook when you enter a room? Do you look for something interesting, inspiring, or beautiful? Do you look for life sweetness? Or do you immediately begin critiquing what you see? It's easy to fall into a pattern of criticizing and reacting negatively. But it's important to realize that this is a choice and that you can change it. If you have to choose between focusing on negative qualities and focusing on sweetness, why would you choose anything but sweetness? When we look for life sweetness, we find it. That is not to say that everything is sweet or that we shouldn't speak out when it isn't. But in an everyday sense, ask yourself at any given moment, what can I find here that is sweet? 
how can I invite that experience of sweetness more deeply into my life? Palms together in front of your heart center. Thanks for being here today, working hard. Hopefully your spine feel better, your back. And wish you a wonderful rest of the day. Hope to see you on the mat soon again. Let's bow your head, maybe fingertips to the third eye in between your eyebrows to seal the practice. Inhale and exhale. Namaste.